Yo, creatives, welcome back to the channel. We're talking about Final Cut Pro 10 today. About a year and a half to two years ago, I switched from Premiere Pro over to Final Cut because the coloring and exporting was bad and just messing up for me personally in Premiere Pro. And I wanna show you basically my whole workflow for Final Cut Pro 10. I've had a bunch of questions about how I color grade and how I, what I export settings I use. And let me just show you everything, my whole workflow with Final Cut Pro 10. Let's get it. All right, so first things first, you open up the program. <laughs> file, and then we do new, and then library. This is basically my project file. So I've already started one. So we're gonna do, I guess, tutorial number two. <laughs> save all right now we have a project so this is typically what i do if i'm doing a music video or a vlog or a youtube video or whatever this video right here so file new project this is going to be our timeline uh i usually just name it main or whatever the title of the video is or music video or project so i'm just a main project right and then i make sure i use 4k typically 38 40 by 2160 and frame rate 23.98 frames per second that's on a typical project if i'm doing like a ig reel or a TikTok or vertical footage in general you can come down here and click vertical and then i always do the 1080 by 1920 i do 1080p i do not do 4k and vertical footage for some reason i've seen it just mess up when you upload it onto instagram or TikTok. i do it in 1080 all the time that might be a pro tip for you it may not i could be wrong i don't know I I just see it on my side it looks better in 1080 so aside from that always usually just doing a 4k and hit okay now we have our timeline right here in this folder with the star i come and drop that down that push that drop down menu and hit new keyword collection and i'll usually make folders for all everything that's going to be used in the video so music maybe for the music then new keyword collection we're going to do assets and that'll be like all the assets or text or overlays or any types of stuff that i need an asset for that video talking head you know what I'm saying? For a YouTube video, maybe I got some B-roll, B-roll from, I don't know, Monday. So basically I just structure all my folders out just like that so that I can have everything kind of organized. And then I'll drop everything where it's supposed to go. If it's a music video, keyword collection, let's do performances. All right, so now I'm gonna import a clip. I basically go find it on the computer and then bring it in. So let's, let's do that. All right, I got this clip from a music video. I'm just gonna click, hold, and drag it into the folder of performances and boom, now I got my clip in here. All right, one thing that I do not like about Final Cut or when I first came with it is this scroll effect, like when it goes over the clip. So I don't, I can't remember if I customized my menu or not, but when you push s it doesn't scroll anymore i like that sometimes i don't want it to be just jumping all through clips and stuff like that so boom that's a little pro tip as well click this and then i just drag it down in and start editing but first of all i do not edit on the storyline i right click and i lift from storyline so storyline is basically it's almost like a nested clip if you're using premiere pro and you can't move it anywhere it has to stay there and it all kind of just magnetizes so i don't like that i like to move it around i like come from a layer uh, format of editing it went um, in Premiere Pro so yeah so it's lifted off the timeline I can move it anywhere I want now boom and then I drop the audio down obviously this is a music video clip <laughs> that's where I bring the audio down all right let me find a spot that looks good for me to color grade all right cool I think I found a spot so basically what I do for color grading is I click on it and I come to the color inspector up here on this right side and then first of all I just get a color wheels windows workspace coloring so now i have a vector scope right here and i have this luma waveform right here so now i can just see like where the levels are and the colors and so forth so let me drag this up and i'm going to add some contrast in first that's always what i do so shadows um obviously zero is down here 100 is up here zero represents pure black 100 represents pure white so yeah you want to get your contrast right you want to separate it i usually try to keep it around that three so it doesn't go down into that zero so maybe right there and let's bring some highlights up all right maybe right there and bring these mid-tones down a little bit and then we're gonna bring these shadows actually back up a little bit to add some more detail maybe boost the highlights just a little bit more that looks fine to me right now and then i'm going to add a colored curves so i'm going to bring these mids down a little bit right here in this area then i'm going to bring this up right here about in this top area Maybe drop this down to kind of make those whites a little bit more gray and then maybe lift the blacks just a tad bit. Bring this down just a tad bit and toggle it off and on. Add some more contrast to it, looks good. All right, boom, we're gonna do some hue and saturation curves as well. So 
click this dropper. I like this red right here, but I want to make it a little bit more orangish red. So I'm going to bring it about right there. And then we're going to click right here so I can get that blue back there that's kind of coming from that light. And now it's right there. I'm going to click on this um, click on this blue, hold shift and move it out a little bit more and do the same for the other one. And you hold shift so that it doesn't go up and down. It stays on the line. Let's see. I'm going to bring this more towards the greenish side, actually. Because I think it looks cool. More so green. Maybe like that. That looks cool. Um, we'll come here. Drop a little spot right here on this saturation versus saturation. So I can make the blacks pure black. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to add a curves. I mean, no, a color wheels since you can't see his skin tone and we're not trying to make that skin tone look natural in this one because it's a stylistic look as a red light on his skin um we can just go here into the shadows and add some color into these shadows and i think I'm, what i'm going to do is add some green dark green right there and deep or deep green then we're going to come to the highlights and i'm going to pump some more orange back into the highlight area just to make that orange and greenish look pop those are complementary colors i do believe now if you take it off put it on it looks pretty cool uh, let's come back to the shadows and make them a little bit more bluish green off on yeah that looks fire so if you come back here i feel like i'm done with this clip already click it off and on that looks fire so i shot this with the r5 and there it is grainy if you look at the clip it's definitely got some grain in it so um typically what i would do is i would use a denoiser go to windows workspace default so we can come back to this regular shot and typically what i would do like i said is use a denoiser so command five that'll pull up our effects down here and if you come down here to neat neat video you can use this drag it on and it will uh denoise and i paid for this you can look into it i'll leave a link down below so you can look into it if you're looking for a good denoiser but basically what it does is it cleans up the grain out of your shots it basically smooths it out and uh you know makes it look better but nine times out of ten i really don't care for music videos because i like to add grain to music videos a lot of the time unless i'm going for a really clean look so we'll take that neat video off and as far as effects go in here what i'm using because i don't you can't really make a bunch of cool effects like i used to be able to in premiere pro and that was something that scared me but i use uh, motion vfx this video is not sponsored by them but i have tons of their effects and i use them all the time and i'm so grateful for them because they made it okay for me to switch to final cut because i did not know what i was going to do for like effects and all the cool stuff i like to do in premiere pro so with that being said motion vfx they have music video uh in music video there this plugin is specifically for music videos and it's got all types of effects on here that i use and the reason i'm telling you about this is because the r5 footage is grainy so what i typically do if footage is grainy is add more grain to it and mess it up more so we got this footage right here this grainy vintage look right here in the music video um plugin is always good because what it does is it adds grain and it adds dirt and blur and it makes it look like i intentionally shot this or edited this with grain on top of it it doesn't look like oh there's grain in the footage it looks bad i'm not watching this video anymore people aren't thinking like that bro but if they were it looks like i intentionally added this grain to it using an effect like this so yeah they also got this light diffuse so Boom, if you drop that on there, take it off on basically bl blooms the highlights, which is cool. As you can see, that light back there over here in this top right corner is bloomed out. That looks super cool. So, so those are the effects that I typically use. All right, boom. So let's just say that we're done with this video. I finished out a whole YouTube video or whatever. Typically, I just make sure that my storyline ends wherever I want my uh, export to end. So boom, let's just say we're going to export this. Let me show you how I export up here in top right hand corner. I just click that, hit export file info i usually delete these tags and then um settings uh let's see usually i do web hosting and then i do h264 for better quality and then obviously 3840 by 2160 4k resolution and then that's it i hit next and then i title it and boom and that's usually what i use for the like youtube videos or quick stuff ig reels if i use like heavy effects and i know some grain or something may get splotchy or sometimes it kind of messes up if i know that it's a big project i usually go to video and audio and i go apple pro res 422 um if i want it to be the best i'll do apple 4res 422 hq for high quality or if 
it's extremely large, which exporting in ProRes can be extremely large. I'll do export ProRes 422 Lite LT, and that helps with how big the file is. So that is my whole little workflow in Final Cut 10. If you enjoyed this, make sure you slap the like button, drop me a comment, let me know if you have any other questions about anything else, or if you have something to help me save time, if you have like a tip or something that you know, because you use Final Cut, let me know. This is my workflow, and that's it. Hopefully it helps the people that have been questioning me about my workflow and final cut uh yeah that's it man until next time peace